Forestry 520, Applied Forest Stand Dynamics. Understanding the role of western red cedar in Pacific Northwest forests. Hello, and welcome back to Northern Arizona University's podcast show known as Tree Talks. In today's episode, your host, Quinn Kawamoto, will discuss the tree species western red cedar, or by its scientific name, Luga plicata, a tree species that is found in the Pacific Northwest. Throughout this episode, we will learn the basic ecology and silvics, the role of stand dynamics, historic and contemporary uses, and the future of this magnificent tree species. So, let's begin. Let's go into the ecology and silvics and learn a basic understanding of western red cedar. Now, one can find western red cedar distributed on the coast of British Columbia down south to northern California from the coast of the Pacific Ocean all the way up to the Cascade Mountain Range. It also includes areas in the Northern Rockies, in Idaho and Montana. The species occupies areas on mesic sites and in riparian areas as well. It grows anywhere in elevation from sea level to about 4,000 feet along the coast and into the Cascades and then in the interior up to 7,000 feet in the northern Rockies. It relies on being a shade-tolerant species. Shade tolerance is a trait species have that helps them establish as part of their niche for being their own species. This means they do well without having much sunlight for several years and do not depend on it as shade intolerant species do. The Society of American Foresters have placed the western red cedar into the forest cover types 227 and 228. These classifications help to describe similarities, distributions, and associated vegetation types, amongst other things. Now that we know a bit more about western red cedar, let's shift gears and focus on the role of stand dynamics. So what exactly is stand dynamics? Dynamics. Well, stand development, according to Oliver and Larson, is the study of changes in forest structure with time, including stand behavior during and after disturbances. Using this definition as a framework, we will go through the four stages of stand development stand initiation, stem exclusion, understory reinitiation, and old growth. Some species that are short lived may be easier to understand the concept of stand dynamics. This is true when evaluating the situation from a human temporal scale. Since humans live relatively short compared to tree species, it is difficult to understand the complexity associated with stand dynamics. Also putting a continuously changing ecosystem into four discrete stages may be hard for others to understand. So let's start out. Stand initiation begins following a disturbance. Some disturbances are stand replacing and discrete, like a wildfire, while others may be more difficult to notice and may take longer, like an insect or a pathogen outbreak. Western red cedar is a late successional species. It comes into prominence long after the disturbance, but not quite as long as, say, silver fir or western hemlock do. Although it does not require shade tolerance to establish, it does quite well in shaded sites. This helps the western red cedar to maintain its resources compared to other fast-growing species. Western red cedar relying on shade tolerance will establish itself after the disturbance occurs. Now let's move into stage two, stem exclusion. This stage begins for more shade tolerant species to maintain their growing space, and occupy a site while the shade intolerant and early seral species begin to grow vertically. Different levels of strata are formed during this stage. Trees less vigorous are outcompeted and begin to die. Growing space is fully occupied, and as a result, the less physically fit trees will begin to lose their vigor. This is not true for western red cedar, as its persistence and patience and the ability to compete with other species will pay off later. 
The third stage, understory reinitiation, begins when snags developed during the stem exclusion phase have released enough growing space for a new cohort to establish. During this time, one can notice an increase in the understory plant diversity. Seedlings, saplings, and herbaceous plants begin to occupy the understory and forest floor. Finally, there's the old growth stage. This stage is when species slow down significantly from growing and there are no remaining trees left from the original cohort following the disturbance. Most people attribute large trees as being old growth and great for habitat for wildlife. Now this may prove to be true in some cases, but not in all. In regard to western red cedar, the old growth stage is most iconic of the forests in the northwest, large in diameter and tall in vertical structure. So what else contributes to the stand dynamics of western red cedar, you may ask? Well, disturbances contribute to the size of the gaps that are found in each stand that help create microclimate conditions for these little guys. The nutrient availability and resources that are available also contribute, such as light, water, soil. In addition, take the site one would find western red cedar are. Are there other plants it's competing against? What other tree species are there? Douglas fir and western hemlock are closely associated with western red cedar in the 227 and 228 cover types. With mixed conifer stands, this could mean more resiliency from insect and pathogen outbreaks, but not necessarily. What else could be done to contribute to stand dynamics? Different silvicultural treatments help to contribute. Clear cuts, single tree selection, group selection, and other treatments will all make their mark on the stand, mimicking the natural disturbances found in nature. So what does this all mean? Well, one must understand that forests are complex, ever-changing ecosystems. Changes also come from humans manipulating the land as discussed with silviculture. Some tree species may be favored over others for economic reasons. Now let's delve in to some of the historic uses of western red cedar. The Native American tribes of the Pacific Northwest used these for long houses from the bowls of the cedar that helped support the roof and the walls. These magnificent trees were also used for totem poles, taking the stems and carving designs in them with painted throughout various colors. The bark of the species was also used for hats, baskets, clothing, etc. By using the different parts of the tree, Native American tribes like the Quinault and Salish were able to support themselves in all facets of life. They also were able to fish in Puget Sound and on the Pacific Ocean for salmon and whales while carving out breathtaking canoes. Although uses of western red cedar may have changed since the Native Americans, this tree still holds value for today's technologically savvy society. Today's use of western red cedar includes using them for the benefit of outdoor furniture and homes. Because of their high water resistance to rot, these species are ideal for decks, bridges, chairs, tables, housing materials, any object that you would find outdoors in moist conditions like the Pacific Northwest. So now let's delve into the future of this species. With climate change, what are some of the implications for this awesome tree, you might ask? Although no one can know for certain, what climate change will do to western red cedar, studies suggest, is moving to higher elevations. They will move to higher elevations for better site conditions that will help support them. Will there be an increase of mortality from pathogens like cedar leaf blight caused by fungal pathogens? Perhaps. Or perhaps an increase of insect outbreaks or wind throw? Well, perhaps that too. But maybe the western red cedar will continue to be successful having its own niche in mi mixed conifer forests of the northwest. Undoubtedly, western red cedar is an important tree species. Throughout the course of this episode, you've learned the basic ecology and selvix, 
the role that stand development plays, historic and contemporary uses, and the future of western red cedar. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for this week. Stay tuned next week as we examine lodgepole pine on the next episode of Tree Talks. Until then, hug a tree. <laughs>